Remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, SEO projects typically take about six months, sometimes longer in competitive markets. Um, but the rewards are great once it gets rolling. We've been misled to believe that dentistry, more specifically the dental business, has to be complicated. Dentistry can be simple and dentistry should be simple. Hello and welcome to another week and another episode of the Dentistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, uh, Dr. T-Bone Agarwal, and this week we're going to be talking about dental websites in 2024. I have an amazing guest, uh, Jeff Gladnick, CEO, founder, uh, would the man that would get arrested if something went bad at Great Dental Websites. That's what he told me. And we're going to talk to you about what is the purpose and what makes a good website in 2024. Jeff, how are you doing today? Now I'm a little nervous about impending uh, legal action that I'm <laughs> unaware of. So. Well, when I asked you yeah, what the I... title was, you said, I said, CEO founder. He goes, well, that's what it says on the business card. But then you said, well, I would be the one that would get arrested if something bad happened. Yeah, I guess I guess it depends on the charges. But uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully so far, so good. We've had no legal issues ever. Uh, I'm hoping to continue that streak for yeah. the rest of my life. That, that's what that's what I say. I, so far, I've had, yeah. uh, shockingly, I've had no legal issues yet so far speeding tickets here that, that's, that's not even a legal issue those those are uh, those if you don't get speeding tickets you're not you're not bending the law i mean what's what's the fun in that <laughs> so listen before we get into websites and kind of get into some nitty-gritty i, I want to make sure uh, our listeners know my goal is to provide actionable items okay the goal is to give people an idea of what they should be doing and how they can do some of this stuff themselves and if they've hired a company what things they should be checking on and make sure that things are be do, being done well. And here's why this is important. Look, I, I, I'm like the old guy now. I started dentistry in 1999. Uh, my first website, I started in 2000. And a website from 2000 is very different from a website in 2024. Oh, yeah. I believe that the purpose of a website today is not being a digital brochure, which is what it was in 2000. Today, the purpose of a website is to be found and to convert patients to getting into your office. Jeff, what do you what comments do you have a, around that? Uh, well, first, I I absolutely agree with you. Um, I mean, we've we you know, almost take that a step further and say the website is sort of like the online hub or communications hub for your practice, um, and it does still you know fulfill the purpose of a brochure to inform, but you have to be able to contact the office. It's useful to have tools like online bill pay, um, chatting with the office, uh, maybe online booking, uh, or being able to view your charts or have like secure messages to send to the office. So it's it's a great way to not just inform your patients, but allow them to communicate with the practice too. Yeah. Well, so are there trade-offs between, because you know, like, like I want my website to look good, but then I also want it to be effective. And is there a trade-off between or can can you really do both or like like what what's the trade off there? It is a trade off uh, sometimes. There are oftentimes there are best practices like having the website you know load quickly on a mobile device. Um, that well that's what the users want and that's what Google wants too. Uh, but other times these things are in direct uh, conflict with each other. And one thing that we see from time to time is um, image quality. Um, dentists will take these like you know eighteen megabyte you know photos in like raw. And send them to us, and like, and we'll 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 tamp down the quality uh, a bit. Uh, so it's you know we can't tell exactly, but if you zoom in, you know a lot, you can kind of see it. Um, but this is you know an 18 megabyte file will make the site take forever to load, um, and Google hates that. So you can and there's a, it's not like you're, the the image will be totally restored. You won't be able to see quality anymore. But if you blew it up on like a giant like 42 inch television or something. That's not even big anymore, like a 75-inch television. Um, then you might see the distortion. Um, and so sometimes clients are a little apprehensive when you you mention that, but that's like the most basic example. Um, another example is uh, YouTube videos. We love to incorporate YouTube videos um, in the in the site, both of patient testimonials and the dentist themselves. We really want um, patients to be able to try to connect with the dentist. Um, but YouTube video loader it actually is pretty slow. Um, so that we've recently like, uh, kind of discovered this and we're, we've gone through 
our software to, so every time YouTube videos are embedded, it's going to replace it with a speedier, like YouTube, YouTube image embedder. And so ironically, if you put uh, a site that has a YouTube embedded video on it through Google's own tool, it'll penalize you. But if you use something that's not Google's tool, it will reward you. I don't know why they do this, but this, you think they, that would be an easy win for them, but I don't know they don't, they don't seem to care. So there's, there's lots of little things like that where like, I mean, if you wanted to make the site as fast as possible, it would look like Craigslist. Um, and if you listened to, you know, how the dentist wants you to do it, it would look like an art gallery um, that wouldn't convert any patients and wouldn't rank. Uh, so usually there's, there's a trade-off in between and it's a, uh, it's working with the client to get something that's aesthetically pleasing to them and um, still is liked by Google. Yeah, so uh, th I think that's a great segue into the first part of it, okay? Is, look, for those dentists that want the most beautiful website, that's one thing, and, and that, that's, that, that's fine, okay? But for most of our listeners, we want a good website, okay, that's effective, pretty if we can, uh, but most importantly, effective. And you keep talking about speed and things like that. And I, I assume, and you talk about the Google, uh, I assume that's all about getting found on the web. Because what's the point of a website if the only people you send there are your own patients? Okay, because they're already your patients. And there's some advantage to that, don't get me wrong. But the real goal of a website is you got to be found first. So why don't we talk about search engine optimization or SEO and what, what, what makes a good practice, uh, uh, good best practices when it comes to being found on the web with your website? Uh, this, this is like three hours of conversation. Well, let's cut it down to about 10 um, minutes I'll, if we can. Yeah, I'll, 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 st I'll start at the top and we can dig in where you're interested. So the, um, there, a lot of it aligns with what uh, a user wants because Google's goal is to get you addicted to Google. So you rely on Google for all of your, your needs. And when they show you a search result, you've assumed that the top ones at the top are going to be good options and you just keep coming back. If you click on things that stink, you'll get frustrated. Maybe you'll try Bing and then that they're upset about that. So they, they really want to um, align their incentives with what the user's intentions are. So we, we, for uh, a couple of things I, I would mention as if you're like make, trying to make a checklist, we want to avoid stock photography. Um, and after a while, uh, especially if someone's been doing research and they've gone to a lot of dental websites, I, I, there, you'll start to see the same people um, on in stock photography. And it's not necessarily a problem as far as Google's concerned, but that's a user interface issue uh, or a UI issue. And the person might be a little turned off by that. If it's like the third time they've seen it, it just starts to feel canned and they might hit back and go somewhere else. That back button, if they hit that quickly, is a signal to Google that you're showing your website was a bad choice. there. Um, so you want the user to stay on the site for a while. Um, having canned copy is is a problem for Google. And you can imagine this if, you know, if you're right, if you have a page on your website about teeth whitening and it's exactly the same, explain the benefits of teeth whitening and how it works as like 10,000 other uh, dental websites. Why would Google pick yours when it has 9,999 other choices to pick from? They're, they're exactly the same. There's no reason to pick yours. And so oftentimes we'll see sites with duplicate content just not rank as highly as they could. Um, even if it's tweaked. Um, so we we will, like every time we write content for clients and we would advise everybody to do this, um, all the content is completely unique. Um, if, they're, if they have any inclination of doing SEO, we sometimes have options for people who are on a tight budget. And I understand, um, especially if you're doing a startup, that budgets might be tight, but that should be thought of as like a temporary crown. Um, this isn't going to be there forever. This is just a placeholder. Well, and then we'll come back to it um, if you want to please Google. You also don't want to be too clinical. Um, a lot of times, like um, dentists will give us feedback and they'll use the proper term, um, like TMD versus TMJ, or they'll say tooth bleaching instead of teeth whitening. But that's not what the consumer thinks and that's not what they search for. So oftentimes, like tooth bleaching, I think it's 1 20th of the search volume that teeth whitening does. It's the same thing, um, but if you use the terms that are more friendly to the consumer um, or the patient, uh, you'll have much better success with uh, Google because that's what people are searching for. No one's, or, well, 5% of the people are searching for tooth bleaching, uh, probably dentists. And so there, like, there, and there's probably another 50 different like terminology, things like that, that you, know, you just learn after doing this for years. Um, but it's important not to be too clinical in your writing. As you said, the whole point is to convert patients. Um, and there's a lot of like supporting uh, content that we like to have on the website that'll do that. Before uh, we, we can get at, into that later, 
but they that having the, all those things on a landing page, you know, uh, is vital because Google will typically tell you they want like four to five hundred words per page, which is a lot. And you don't have to do that on every page, but on the important landing pages for services, if you're trying to rank for, you know, Invisalign in Parker, Colorado or something, you need to have your own landing page about that. You can't put everything together on the same page and just say, these are all my services and here's a paragraph about each service. When you give that to the company who's trying to do SEO, then we have to make some choices about what we're going to rank that page for, because it can only be ranked for one thing. Um, so we can't rank that page for Invisalign and teeth whitening and implants. Um, we can't do it all at once. So those things need to be separate. Okay. Um, there's, I can give you 10 more examples. Yeah, no, uh, and I'd, lo I'd love that, but I, I want to ask this question, okay? Yeah. All right, so I, I, and then this is the reality, okay? When it comes to SEO, I, in 20 years, have never invested in SEO, okay? Uh -huh. And it shows now, okay? Because I'm not ranked anywhere in the Google, even though I've been around a long time. So what would I need to do? What would a dentist need to do to help make their website stand out when it comes to SEO? What, like, what would be, let's say, three top things yeah. that you can think of? Maybe not the most important things, but three actionable things that people can do to make their website stand out when it comes to SEO. Okay, so if I had to pick three, um, every you need to have unique content and enough content. So as I said, four to 500 words per service landing page and the home page. Um, all the, imp the important sections of your site need to have sufficient content. Um, that content needs to be optimized by someone who knows some of the basic principles of SEO. And this, this can be a dentist. Um, we have some clients that are, you know, they've taken this on as a hobby. They're smart people. You know, every dentist has gone to college and then, you know, at least another four years. Um, so th this is something you can do if you're a dentist. It just may not be the best use of your time um, to spend it learning this when you could be working on dentistry, which is more profitable. But the, so the, every page has some metadata, like uh, a title tag, a meta description, and something called the H1 tag, which is like the big bold text that you typically see at the top of a page is the, the first header. That's why it's called the H1. And so those are the most important things that have to be unique for every single page. So oftentimes we'll see uh, SEO on sites that is just very programmatic. It'll it'll just say like, you know, Invisalign, you know, Gladic Dental Partners, and that's it. And then it'll say Teeth Whitening, Gladic Dental Partners. It's just programmatic. That's not ideal. Um, we want this to be kind of tuned by a human being for every single page. It's a little bit of work, um, but the extra effort is worth it. And then the last thing, if I had my third choice would probably be Google My Business Optimization. And that includes reviews. You should be asking for reviews. That's one thing that a dentist can do. It's probably like 19% of the algorithm. That seems to be the commonly accepted weighting of it, uh, that you have lots of reviews that you're asking them on a regular basis, that you respond to reviews. Um, Google takes that as you know an active business. All the information in there is up to date. Oftentimes we see just little mistakes um, where like uh, people have listed, like imagine you're a dentist and you had a more common name uh, like Joe Smith and you're in New York City and you're in an office building that's like, you know, 50 stories and there's like three Joe Smiths in there. So if you have little things like having suite, you know, 1420 or number 1420 or floor 14, you know, office 20, like Google sees these and it's not quite sure. If this is a new Joe Smith that's just moved in, there's only three of them, could be a fourth, or is this one of the existing Joe Smiths and it just has bad data. And so you have to like, um, and th this is something I'll, I'll, uh, I'll share with you guys at the end. We, uh, this is called citation management, but all those references to your, your name, address, and phone number have to be the same or Google starts to get confused about who you are and the points that they would have given to your practice, they're giving to this fake kind of ghost of your practice that they think is another person. So that it's critical that your Google My Business listing is kept up to date, that all the information is the same everywhere on the web, on Facebook and social media and any directory sites. Um, that's very important. Okay. So to kind of, uh, to make sure I heard that correctly, um, what you would say the top three, S the three main SEO tips that somebody needs to start with, because I, I get overwhelmed when I start hearing about SEO. Okay. There's just a lot of stuff that goes into it, as you know, is one. I, I would panic if, if I put me in a chair and maybe like try to seat a crown or something. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, but that's, come out. That, I'm that's, done. That's, I'm that's, out. That seems so easy to me, seating a crown. So, um, 
So number one would be, one would be unique and enough content, uh, which, and then I keep hearing you say a, a singular service-based pages. Okay, so when, yes. when you say landing page, in other words, that's a single page uh, on a website. So uh, again, Invisalign is the, the brand name example here. Yeah, th think about it like this. Each page should, and this isn't totally true, but this is the best way to think about it. Um, each page should be designed to, to attract a search term. So, and of course you're going to get variations to this, but your page about Invisalign should be someone looking for Invisalign in my city. That's the page that you're trying to win that contest with. SEO is like running like 500 races at once and we don't need to win all of them, but there's a couple that we really want to win. Maybe we want to win the implants one or the Invisalign one, um, or maybe this, the general dentist one, but that's a very competitive race. There's a lot. So there's, you know, all these different races have different levels of competition. Um, and each page is your entry into that race. Okay. The second, so again, unique and enough content with a yep. singular page for each service. Um, yes. Number two, so number two would be opti optimized SEO. So that's technical nerd data to me, okay? Yeah, that, that's technical nerd data. Yeah, yeah, that's metadata. That's things like title, description, and H1 tags, okay? Correct. And that, yeah, and if you've ever seen like Google search results, you'll, you'll recognize that because it'll say things like dentist in Parker, Colorado, you know, Gladick part, uh, Dental Partners, you know, Family Dentist Near Me or something. You'll see that in the title and it, it looks kind of like it, that one's a little too on the nose, but it looks yeah. like it's been written for SEO to an extent. Okay. And some of, the thing, of some of the things I've seen, like, for example, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, but I see a lot of people that also add surrounding cities in some of those SEO metadatas and tags. Is that, is that? Something? Nah, yeah, that's, that's overkill. Um, the, I mean, you, you used to see that in like, the keywords tag, which is no long, which hasn't been used by Google for a long time. People would just dump this comma delimited list of like every city nearby and all these yeah. keywords and just kind of spam it in there. Um, it's really, you can rank um, pages for neighboring cities, but the further away you get from your own uh, city and the more competitive the city that you're trying to poach into, the more difficult it becomes. And the reason is it's, this is against Google's interest. You know, if you're, in Raleigh and you're trying to rank your site also for Charlotte, uh, Google's like, well, who's going to drive? How many people are going to drive from Raleigh to Charlotte? He's done a great job optimizing his site for Charlotte, but he's not there. And this business is clearly not in Charlotte. So why should we show it to people in Charlotte who are looking for implants near me? Because it's not near them. Um, even though you've tuned it that way, Google is going to reject it. And I, I there guess, are we, yeah, yeah, there are other ways to go about that. And I guess at the end of the day, Google's so smart now with, they know where you're at based by ISP address or based on your phone. They, they just kind of know literally like what within probably three feet. Away yeah. Yeah. At. They'll, they'll, they'll take the lat lawn coordinates sent by your phone. Um, and they'll use that to compare, uh, to the website, uh, which is why we embed lat latitude longitude coordinates in every client's website. Yeah. And then the number three thing. So number one was unique and enough content with service-based pages. Number two was the nerdy technical stuff, which is the metadata, the SEO stuff, title description, H1. And then number three was probably an area that most dentists uh, are definitely missing, and I'm definitely not doing enough there. And that's uh, the Google My Business page, which which Google has changed that from Google Maps to Google Plus. I, to, I don't even know what it's called to anymore. Google it Local. Like Months. Yeah. Yeah. But Google My Business and, and basically Google My Business, my understanding is your reviews are housed there. Your location is housed there. Your hours are housed there. You can respond to reviews there. You can put the services that you do. And you can even put like updated news and you know things like that. Almost, almost like a social media feed. Uh, you can do some of that stuff there as well. Yeah, that that's exactly right. It's kind of like your home, your business's official home on Google. Um, all those things you mentioned you can do. You can also add services and FAQs. Um, you can even write your own questions and then respond to them. Um, and the, those are typically things that we will do uh, on behalf of clients that are using our SEO services. So there's activity on the GMB profile. And responding to reviews is another good one. Um, it just shows Google you're alive and awake. Um, there's there's also, you can also run ads that if you're, we're kind of getting a little off topic, but uh, this is one way you can win if you're in a very competitive area and you have an advantage with like your opening hours, like we have some clients that are open on uh, in evenings and on Saturdays and they'll run pay-per-click ads and you can show your Google My Business listing and it'll come up fourth. But if you, sh if you run it at like 6 p.m. on a Friday and you're open till seven and someone's like, I need to call a dentist right now so I can either come in right now 
or maybe first thing tomorrow, um, they'll see three businesses that say close and then they'll see your ad and it says open and it's a win by default. Um, and also the ad prices typically drop then because a lot of dentists will shut down their ads because no one's there to answer the phone, which makes sense, but you are. Um, so this, this is all, this is off topic for SEO. It's, it's kind of something that you can exploit um, for cheap um, using Google's paid search products. Absolutely. Okay. So last question when it comes to SEO, because we got to get found on the web. Uh, yeah. Is SEO one of these things where I do it once and I'm done? It can be, um, but it just won't be as effective. It's it's kind of like um, going onto a lake and like flooring it in your boat and then stopping. You know, you're going to keep going for a little while. You might even catch like a current, um, but eventually you're going to get shoved onto the shore or stop. Um, and so, and, and think about it like if you're, you know, if you have a colleague down the street from you who's doing SEO all the time, they're constantly adding content. They're looking at what competitors are doing and tweaking and refining the metadata. Um, they're adding more media, videos, picture content. They're responding to all the reviews on Google My Business. They're getting more reviews. They're adding updates and news and FAQs and services. Um, they're updating their hours to say they're closed for holidays. You know, if you're Google and you're looking at this from afar, which one looks like the more active business and which would be a safer bet to show to your users, your, you know, customers at this point, as is the, your preferred option for a dentist. Google can't really tell who's a better dentist. You know, the guy who doesn't even have a website might be the best dentist in town or that's ever existed, but Google can't doesn't know that. Um, so they're looking for the signals um, they see on your website and on GMB and in other places to tell them that this is an active business and it has the important information that people are looking for and it's a good match. It's interesting. You brought up, so you, you just, as you were talking about that, it made me think of something uh, that I, I live in my own life, uh, somewhat non-dental related. But like when I'm, like I was, I was in India recently and I'm, I'm looking for restaurants while I'm in India, like best X, Y, I get various, I don't like Indian food in India because I get 10,000, 10 million results literally. Uh, you know, I write looking for X, the best X, Y, Z dish. And one yeah. of the things I did, because there's so much, there's so many of those in India, is I looked at the freshness of their reviews. And and yeah. so, like I looked at a, a restaurant that didn't have, that only, their last review was two months ago versus a restaurant that had a review last week. I was, I was more apt to go to the restaurant that had a review more recently than two weeks ago and or two months ago. And so- that kind of leads me to the importance, and, and this will kind of kind of bring into the effectiveness of a website, but part of SEO strategy and conversion strategy is to have fresh, ongoing content. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so not only, like, uh, consumer behavior uh, on dental websites is exactly the same. Um, people do check the recentness of reviews, and so does Google. The What we would call the velocity of reviews, you know, how often these are coming and how quickly and how recent. Um, is a factor in how Google ranks your GMB profile. So if you like, we'll have clients who are like, no, I got enough reviews. I did that three years ago. And it's like, well, what have you done since then? Like nothing. I got 200. I'm good. No, no, we're not. Um, Google would much rather see a steady drip of reviews than this huge burst of reviews and then nothing. Because what does that look like? It looks like fraud. Um, even if they're all real, Google is very aware of fraudulent reviews and there are companies that will sell you fraudulent reviews and Google's intent on finding them. And if you, I would highly advise people not to do this because eventually they probably will find them. These, you know, um, click farms get busted from time to time, and then they'll 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 back it all out, and then they'll blacklist you. And so I I'll see this in dental forms all the time. Like, you know, 120 of my reviews just got taken down, and they got taken down. Uh, oftentimes they're they're not fake, but the, they were using like a tool that was violating Google's terms of service, and Google figured it out, and they save everything. And they'll go back in time and undo it. Um, so you do have to continuously ask for reviews, um, and Google will grade you on the freshness of those reviews. Um, consumers will also like once they read your reviews, their next the the next most common action I think it's like thirty or thirty four percent something like that uh, is to go to the website. So it, just having a great GMB profile isn't enough. Um, you know, you think about someone selecting a dentist. We're, it's not like we're buying bricks, and it's just like well, just load them in my truck and thanks, here's the money, I'll never see you again unless I need more bricks. Um, it's this. You're going to a dentist, you're hopefully going to have a relationship with them maybe for decades, and your children are going to come here in many cases. So you you want 
to be comfortable with this person in this business. So most people will, it's, it, they, they need a little bit more to read the reviews. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's like just another, it's yet another gateway and you get through the next gate and the next gate and the next gate and eventually you get a phone call. Okay. Interesting. So, so the freshness is definitely important. Now, now let's, uh, let's move from, Hey, I've been found or semi found on a website on, on, on the Google. Uh, let's talk about the content and the conversion of a website itself. What are some things or what are some, some areas that dentists need to focus on when it comes to building an effective converting website? Yeah, so I'll, I'll pick up on my last comment about the gates. Like getting found is the first gate. Like if, if they can't find you at all, we can't even get onto the, you know, the dance floor. But after that, there's a couple things that we believe patients um, look for to make a decision about whether or not to call the office. And so you know, they want to see examples of your work. So before and after cases. And this is something I often see dentists screw up um, where they'll have fantastic cases, but they just dump dump them all on like one page. Like here's our before and after case. And it's just like ugly teeth, pretty teeth, ugly teeth, pretty teeth. There's no description. We don't know what service it was. Like some of them you can tell like, well, the teeth went from yellow to white. So I guess there's teeth whitening. Um, but like what, what happened? Did, did they get braces? What kind of braces? Was it Invisalign or traditional ortho or, or something else? Um, you have to like write up these cases and those also should be on their own landing pages. Oftentimes before and after cases will rank um, when someone's looking for, you know, that specific service, it'll show your page about before and after cases. If you've done it that way, if you just dump all the images there, Google doesn't know what's going on. They can't really interpret uh, what's happened. Um, I would also have video of the dentist. Um, a lot of times people will show like these 3d like video explainers of like, here's the implant is screwing in and, you see everything in like this 3D animation, which is fine. Um, but what we think is more important is a video of the dentist um, explaining to a patient, you know, what's the advantage of Invisalign and why is it an advantage over traditional braces and are there pros and cons and why you'd be a good fit for this and why you'd recommend it, maybe why you wouldn't. Um, those types of things help somebody kind of connect with the dentist emotionally. Like I, like with the, the brick example, it is an emotional decision. You're, you're hiring someone put their hands in your mouth. Like this is, there's not a lot of services you can legally buy like that. You want this to be a, a good connection and that helps kind of uh, allay someone's fears who might have a dental phobia. Um, to the same extent, video testimonials for patients, there's social proof of like this person, maybe I can relate to what they say. Uh, and especially if, um, if patients make comments that you've heard from other patients before that where they were, they, they, they tell you, um, if you're a good listener, like why they almost didn't come in. Like I was afraid, you know, cause I hadn't been to the dentist in a while and I was afraid it would hurt. And if you have a patient that says something like that, but it didn't, then that's a great person to ask for a video testimony. And they can say, oh, I was terribly scared and I hadn't gone to a dentist in three years. I, I knew they were going to yell at me, but I, I came to see, you know, Dr. Agarwal and he was so nice. And he was actually, it was actually very pain, very painless, um, hurt just a little bit once and he, but he warned me. And it was exactly what I needed. I'm, I wish I hadn't put it off so long. If this is you, don't do it. You know, just go see Dr. T-Bone and he's going to take great care of you. And that's like the exact thing you want to hear from a patient. Um, and then there's lots of other supporting information, FAQs, blog posts, information about um, the practitioner. Because um, you may have like in-house ortho or um, pediatric dentist that you want to show on the page about those services. And so we try to assemble all this, what we call related content onto a single landing page, um, it, we put it in both. So there'll be, you know, the before and after case will sit off by itself, but we'll also show a before and after case for that service. Um, so all the things that you would need to make a decision are right there on that one landing page and then a call to action or a couple of them usually. So, you know, you get social proof, we get confirmation that the dentist doesn't seem crazy. Uh, we see examples of their work and we can, you know, think about our own work, our own mouse that looks similar to that. And, I would be happy with the result. Great. Maybe some common FAQs or blog posts, and then they can dig into more if they need more. Um, if they want to read all the FAQs, they can read them, but the top three are there. And if they want to read every blog post you've ever written about implants, they can, but the, la the, the last like three are, are up there. Um, so that's typically the way that we try to construct landing pages. Um, and, and of course, you know, the call to action is important. We want them to do something. Okay. So what, what is a good call to action on a website? Uh, it depends on what you're trying to get them to do. Um, sometimes you want them to sign up for, you know, a, a drip email campaign, but oftentimes you just want them to call. And so it's, 
it, it, it's just an, it's an invitation to do it. It's making it easy for them to do it. Usually this is a combination of like either a contact form or a click to call button. And we see this mistake a lot on mobile websites where, you know, they'll say call our office today and you're like, and the person might think, okay, I'm ready to call. How do I do it? Well, where's the phone number? And you scroll to the top and it's not there. And then like maybe, maybe it's in the footer in like super tiny font. And like, this is a really easy thing to screw up. You have to have a click to call button that's ever present at the top of a mobile uh, website or the, the mobile version of your website, I should say. I don't know why um, this is ever not done that way, but I, I think it's just sloppiness. So just, and then the contact form should be short. Um, some dentists will send us like all this information for like pre-qualifying insurance. And the thing is with online forums, every single form field you add, there is a marginal drop-off rate of people who abandon the form. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I won't do a form that's too complicated. I'm like, this is. Oh no, yeah, it. and we've all been there. Like, you you fill out. You're like, all right, I'll fill it out, and then it's like page two. You're like, son of a. Yeah. And you're like, you fill out page two, and then it's like page three. You're like, oh my god, how many pages are there? And then you start to get angry. Um. So what you want to do, you you want to collect like the essential information of like the contact info and like what the problem is. And then follow up with the person to collect insurance and everything else. Like, I, I'd rather have the front desk have the opportunity to talk to somebody than that than to have a highly qualified patients that don't, that don't waste any of their time and they're all highly qualified. But we get you know twenty five percent of them. Um, the front desk can screen some of these, and um, well, I'd just rather have the the practice get more at bats, even if not all the balls are directly over the plate. All right, perfect. All right, so I, I wrote some things down here that I want to talk about, okay? So you gave us a list of, like, examples of work, uh, video of dentist, video testimonial, uh, FAQ, blog posts. So there's, uh, there's, there's quite a few things I want to digest, okay? The first thing sure. that stuck out to me, and I, I think I might be guilty of this, is just having a page of before and afters with no words or description. And what I wrote down was we want to do a case study versus just a before and after. And a case study would be something along the lines of, hey, meet patient Jeff. Jeff came in to us unhappy with his smile. Specifically, he had old, worn down teeth. And Jeff was just tired of the way his teeth looked. We utilized 10 porcelain veneers to make his smile look great. Something like this was, uh, took two weeks, two visits. And here's the result of Jeff's result. Now he's happy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, th that is exactly the way that we uh, would write a before and after description. Um, because it also gives you the opportunity to slip in some SEO optimized words. Like maybe I'm from that neighboring city or that suburb of Raleigh that is difficult for you to rank in because you're far away, but maybe that's where I came from. You know, Jeff lives down in like the you know, Tulane neighborhood. I, I'm sorry, I'm unfamiliar okay. with Raleigh. I'm making up neighborhoods, I think. Uh, but, and he came down to our office in, you know, this part of the, uh, in the Sunnyside uh, neighborhood uh, because it was near where he worked. And so you can kind of slip in some things that are very natural like that. And it also tells a story. Other people will resonate like, you know, what, what was the event that made Jeff, you know, unhappy with his smile? Maybe he was at a work event and someone made a comment. Maybe he was on a date and, you know, the, he noticed, you know, his date kind of looking when he smiled, kind of like uh, recoiling a bit. And he realized there's time to fix that, you know, giant gap in his teeth or some of the yellow coffee stains or something like that. Um, so there's, Usually, like um, those trigger points um, are, or he was, or someone was recently divorced, and they decided, well, I got to get back in shape, I got to clean up my smile. Like, there's a couple things that that need to be done, um, or someone was getting married. They're on the other end of the spectrum. Um, we see that all the time. Um, people getting married, they want to get teeth whitening uh, before the wedding. Um, so there's there's a lot of different like ways that you can tell that story, and the way that you described it is perfect. Um, and it'll, it'll, that'll help resonate with patients. All right. So I'm going to, let's, let's go a little deeper on that if you don't mind. Okay. So like level one would be to get rid of just the before and after and make it a case study with some basic words, kind of like I just described. Yeah. Le level one would be like here, uh, it's on page and it's like veneers. <laughs> yeah. <It's> a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go level, level, one. Yeah. level one, a let's do it. I mean, yeah. so let's go Indian level one. Okay. okay. Which, is, which will be like an a plus a, 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 which will be probably most people's a plus. Level two of that would be on that same page, maybe a patient video testimonial to go along with the same patient. Would that? Be oh yeah, that'd be yeah, that'd be great. Whenever we can get a patient testimonial video that also has a before and after case, we will link them together. So you see the same person talking about their case on the same page. That's 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 great. Okay. 
That's like level five. Okay, well, that would be level two to me. Okay. Okay. Level three would be then a video of the doctor talking about this particular case in, in basically like the description I just said. It would Maybe I would have my iPad in front of me kind of like this, and we could screen record the iPad, and I could talk about here's what the patient came in looked like. I could do some drawings on there. I could swipe over and then say, here's the after, here's what we did, blah, blah, blah. And we could do something along those lines, and we could add that video to that case I, study page as well. I, 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 I like the idea of a video of the doctor, uh, but I don't think it's necessary to have the doctor comment on the individual case okay. for every single one. I think that's just too laborious. Um, and I think a, a general comment of like, you know, I'm Dr. Agarwal and, you know, this is how we approach implants in my practice. And these are the type of implants we use. This is my training. This is the, you know, the equipment we use to make sure it's great every time. We have a steric machine so you don't have to wait, you know, for weeks to, for this to come back from the lab, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's basically, this is our office's approach to this service. That I think is is sufficient, and that could almost be a stock video that you put on each case study page. Yeah, yeah, you could. Um, we we typically will embed those uh, sections on the service page. Okay. Um, so if someone wants to know more about the service, here you go. Um, but yeah, you could certainly do it on a before and after case too. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. The next thing that stuck out to me, and kind of our last point, I want to talk about with the website. It kind of goes with, and you mentioned it kind of goes with SEO as well. And I, I'm going to call these the FAQ and the blog posts. Uh, and yeah. the concept I, I keep reading about, or I've read a lot, is at the end of the day, Google is the search engine, the number one search engine in the world. Probably, you probably know more than me. I assume it has 90% of the search traffic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. And and basically, Google as a search engine is basically a- answers questions that people put into it. And that's what search is, right? Best dentist near me or my teeth hurts. How do I get it fixed? Or yeah. is there pain after, why do I have sensitivity after filling X, Y, Z? And right. I, I call this, and there's actually a website called Answer the Public, uh, but I call that like these FAQs, these blog posts that you create, they should be built, uh, I assume, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, they should be built around answering the common questions that go into search, into the Google search engine. Yeah. Um, I mean, sure, that, that, that's certainly the way FAQs are. And if you write them well, sometimes they'll even show up in those, like, I um, can't remember what Google calls them. They're like snippets yeah. where it'll show the FAQ directly in Google, and then you can click in to get more information. And we'd rather have them go to your website, but Google is going to show those snippets. So if they're going to show it, we'd rather get that our client shown with a link. It's better than nothing. Um, same thing for blog posts. It's you know, this is just in blog posts and FAQs and before and after cases to an extent are just expounding on what we're trying to do with those landing pages for Invisalign in my city. Now it's like, you know, um, affordable Invisalign in my city or quick, you know, quick results for Invisalign in my city or, you know, Invisalign that accepts my insurance in my city or a provider or something like that. So there's a bunch, like if you think about like a giant like tree, kind of branching off with all the different search terms, like under each um, service, there's probably like another 15 to 20 variations of like things that people might type into Google to find that service that we would build and that somebody doing SEO uh, would create FAQs, blog posts, and before and after cases to try to hit those, you know, 10 to 15 different variations. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, are there like, okay. So real quick, I, one of the things I forgot to mention early in the uh, episode is that uh, for those of us that are interested, you can get uh, for free with no obligation is what, what uh, you guys call a listing scan. Can you walk us through what that includes, Jeff? Yeah. So I, I talked um, over, uh, I talked about that earlier with the, the example of Joe Smith in New York, our, our mythical friend here. Um, and so that this would help you identify those problems. Um and so if you, if you go to greatdentalwebsites.com slash T-Bone and just put in your practice information, we'll send you a free like citation audit. So it'll tell you kind of what we've found and where the problems are. And then you can just take that and give it to your existing web people and say, I knew it. Go ahead and fix this. Hopefully, you know, the, the whole purpose of this is you might think, oh, well, let's see what you guys are charged to fix it. Um, so this is a sales tool. Sure. But um, it is useful too. Um, it'll tell you where the problems are. And you can log into those accounts yourself and fix them if you're so inclined um, or have the people you're already working with do it. But it's important to know, especially if you've bought a practice, um, you probably have a ton of citations out there for the old dentist stamp. Um, and so this is kind of 
diluting the value of of points that Google's assessing to your business because there's a second business that occupies the same space in their mind. But it's not. It's the same one. It's just the one you uh, you purchased. All right. That's the most common problem. Okay. So to get to get that, they go to www.greatdentalwebsites.com slash T-Bone, T-B-O-N-E. Yep. And for our listeners, I would love for you to do this so Jeff realizes that our podcast actually has people that listen to it. Uh, and that would be amazing if you guys could do that for me. And I, I think it would be great for you to know kind of just kind of where you're performing. And hopefully it comes back with no problems and it comes back with you doing A+. plus and everything that you yeah. can do. And then it's a great area for you to work on, for you to have your existing people work on, and or if you want to have Jeff's company work on it. Let, let's leave some. Let's leave today's conversation, Jeff, with uh, a, a quick conversation on probably the hottest topic in stock markets today, and that's AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, as, a, as an avid enjoying user of ChatGPT and Gemini now from Google, uh, what are the pluses and minuses of AI when it comes to websites and dental websites? We, we've done a couple experiments with AI, and most of them have been failures, um, but some of them have been successful. And so, like, uh, we've used it, we've tried to use it for, like, stock image generation because we, we try to get our clients to give us as much unique uh, imagery as possible, but not everybody has it uh, or they don't have it immediately and they want to get the website live, so we have to settle uh, for stock photography sometime. And we're like, oh, okay, can we use, uh, you know, Dolly or Midjourney or one of the uh, many image generators uh, to give us um, stock images? Um, and some of them are good, but like there's something about like the eyes, especially on like the kids that are generated, they just look dead. Uh, they're like these dead eyes and it just creeps me out. Um, the other th problem is um, la the last time I checked this, one of the biggest problems that uh, those image generators had were hands and teeth. And so you see these mouths with like three sets of teeth in them, like 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 from like um, the movie Alien or something. That the things are gonna come out and get you. Um, and so I like it, it's not, it, it's not it's getting better. Um, but if you wanted to generate a picture of like you know uh, like a car or something or like a building or an explosion, like it's great at that. Um, that doesn't come up a lot with dental websites though. Uh, but it's it could show a picture of like you know an office or you know a tooth or something. Um, it would do that okay. Generating content is risky. Um, we 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 even built um, a custom version of ChatGPT that used exclusively our data set of FAQs. I think we had like thirty two thousand FAQs that we'd written, and we were like, okay, can like all of these have been vetted? They're all right. You know, there's nothing wrong about this. Um, can we just tell ChatGPT lean on this data set alone to answer questions? And then we'll put in a question and give us something unique. And 40% of the time, it would just make something up. Um, so there, I remember one of them in the test case, it was like, can you put a crown on a rotten tooth? And it was like, yes. And it's like, well, I, I guess that's true. I mean, you could put like a new roof on a condemned building, but that's dumb. Like, why would you do that? Um, I live there, what there, Jet TPG should have come back with. Yes, but it's dumb. It didn't say that. It was like, you know, you deal with the, 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 you know, the rotting leader or something. It was like, this is, this is a horrible idea. And so I, it felt like, I think it was like 30 to 40% of the time, it would just hallucinate something that was completely wrong. And we're very reticent to, to hook anything like that up into production. Um, now we have done, uh, run some experiments. We haven't uh, done this on any client websites yet, um, but we've considered it. Um, you know, we might offer the service to clients. Uh, where we can, because it does save a lot of time. I think it's like half the time. If you use ChatPG to generate uh, the data or the content and then have a copywriter go through and edit it. So you yeah. kind of treat it like a junior copywriter that's a, that's not really quite confident yet and can't be trusted. Uh, but hey, it does decent work and you can update it. It is a little quicker. Um, one thing that- Bones is, are there in that sense is what you're saying. What's up? The, the it, it can generate something with good bones and then- Somebody with some good skill yeah. can then can then update it. Yeah, yeah. So that might be a time saver for you as a dentist. Like, give me you know four paragraphs about the benefits of Invisalign, and then you go through and then remove the part where it says it cures cancer. That's you don't want that. Um, so that it, it, I, I'm dead serious. Like, you will see weird things like this, um, and you don't want the liability of um, you know. Like, I I remember I think it was uh, Air Canada that just got sued successfully 
because their the chatbot told somebody a policy that was just not true. And Air Canada was like, hey, it was just a chatbot. And they're like, but you put it on your website and it told somebody that they wouldn't have this fee and they charged that, them. That's because Canada uh, a socialist country. I, I, I don't, well, I, I'm yeah. somewhat kidding, tongue in cheek, let's move on. <laughs> we, we won't get into that now. Um, but you're right. Um, so, so one thing it's been very good at, and we've, we've just started to roll this out, um, in the last couple of weeks, we've had a bunch of clients on this and it's been extremely successful is analyzing phone calls. So typically we would, you know, we'll, if we're doing paid search campaign for a client, you know, they want to know, Hey, we just paid Google, you know, 3000 bucks and we paid you guys, um, a management fee. Well, what did we get, Jeff? You know, I'm not throwing, you know, three grand into the wind here. I want to know if I got any patients. And so as the marketing company, you have to listen, have hire somebody to listen to the calls. They'll typically listen to it on like two X or three X um, and try to figure out like, did they, did the patient schedule? You know, what did they schedule for? If they didn't schedule, why, you know, was it insurance? Was it cost? Did they, did the front desk say something offensive? Um, did they take too long and put them on hold? And so there's a bunch of, and then we can give that feedback to the office for, you know, opportunity for improvement. One of our employees, um, has been tweaking this like chat GPT integrated thing that will take all the calls, tr- get a transcript and have chat GPT process the entire transcript and then tell you all that data. Did they schedule? What was it for? When did they schedule the intent? Why they, they canceled? What service? Um, how many people scheduled? And it's, it's been amazingly good at that. There's a very low error rate. Um, when we've done this, there's a couple edge cases we, that we keep finding that we keep tweaking out, but it's been very good at that. Um, so there's a couple of couple things I like about it. Um, and I've seen other applications that are more clinical um, with like, you've probably seen, I think, I uh, can't remember the name of the company, but uh, you might know, but they, they'll show like x-rays and they'll identify, you know, cavities oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of those coming out, yeah. Yeah, so those those things are, those things look promising. Uh, my brother's an orthopedic surgeon and they're doing something similar to, you know, help um, with the, the placement of artificial hips. Works pretty well for that. Um, so I, I think that some of the um, x-ray analysis and, Radiology analysis um, is promising too. All right. Well, that's that's great. So uh, obviously, we've talked about a lot of stuff today. Okay. Uh, number one, I hope we can reiterate the importance of a dental website in 2024. I want to make sure that you understand that the purpose of a website is to get found and to get butts in the chair. Now, along the way, you have to create fresh content content that is relevant to what Google finds relevant, which Google, what Google does know very well is what people around you are specifically searching for. So you got to answer those questions and you got to do some techno babble wizardry uh, on the back end to help Google see all of this data. And, and then you as a dentist have to do your part in helping your website company. And what the website company can't do for you is they can't do the videos for you. They can't take the before and afters for you. I mean, you can pay somebody to come do that stuff for you, but they can't, they can't literally do that for you. What they can do is get the data and make sure they put it up and put it in the right spots for you. Uh, and, and then you have to have call to actions on each of your pages. And what I hear over and over and what I keep reading over and over is that you need to get pages on your website focused in on specific services. Uh, and, and that's how you win in, in, in the game of Google. And it takes ongoing effort and consistent effort over time uh, to win at this game. Uh, so that's kind of, in, in a nutshell, what we've kind of talked about today. Uh, and, and Jeff, do you have any last minute thoughts? And then, and then also tell our listeners how they can get in touch with you if they have additional questions or are interested in how great dental websites uh, can, can help them directly. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they, remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, SEO projects typically take about six months, sometimes longer in competitive markets. Um, but the rewards are great once it gets rolling. I, you know, I started this and if they want to get in touch with me, you can just send me an email, Jeff at greatdentalwebsites.com. I'm really active on the Dentaltown community. If you're on Dentaltown, um, in a couple of dental Facebook groups, you might find me in there. Um, and greatdentalwebsites.com is our company. We work with uh, like 950 or so clients around the world, um, including, well, not all eight of my family members are still practicing, uh, but five of them are. So all everything that we do is tested on the family members that I have are dentists. So I hear about it at Thanksgiving. I hope you charge them about, double. Yeah. No, I actually, um, one of my brothers, I charged $1 more than the other brother um, just to... 
just to see if they've never noticed. <laughs> so if they li- if they're listening to this, maybe they'll find out that I've I know they uh, I actually g- I gave my dad a pretty steep discount. Yeah, dad dad deserved everything. Yeah. Yeah. And he paid for college, so it's fair. All right, Jeff, thank you so much, and thanks everybody for listening in. Uh, listen, our goal is to help you win with actionable information. Here's what you can do for me in return. One, we'd love for you your support by sharing this episode, sharing our podcast, sharing us on social media. That would be amazing. Two, if you'd really love to get engaged with us, visit us at 3D Dentist. And you can do that by going to www.3d-dentist.com. And we'll see you guys on next week's episode.